Hey folks, the other day I was playing Sonic Drift, like you do. It's not a very good game. I don't think it's particularly interesting and it's vastly inferior to the kingly Sonic R. Sonic R makes perfect sense to me. It's a racing game with Sonic and Co, so naturally, most of the characters race on foot. In Sonic Drift and its sequel, everyone's driving a vehicle which feels kind of generic. Just a run-of-the-mill Mario Kart clone, right? I did find myself doing a little bit of reading up about the various cars in the game though, and found an interesting little nugget about one of them in particular. Let me run you through the lineup. Sonic drives the rather iconic Cyclone, a beautiful little red number based on the Ferrari F40. What a beautiful red Cyclone. Tails drives the MTP-01 Whirlwind, a rather snazzy Formula One style vehicle painted in a yellow and white color scheme, fitting for Tails. It looks a little like a Lotus 7. Dr. Robotnik drives the Egg Typhoon. Now this one obviously isn't based on any real life cars, it's just a slimmer looking version of Robotnik's famous Eggmobile. Then we come to Amy Rose. She drives a car called Breeze, a cheery vintage single-seater convertible sporting a bold blue and yellow paint job. Looks cool. When you play Sonic Drift, it might not be obvious, but when you take a look at the cover of the game or some of the artwork associated with the game, you'll probably notice something weird. Breeze is alive. He's actually an anthropomorphic car with big beaming eyes and a cheeky smile. Kind of odd, right? According to the Japanese manual for Sonic Drift, Breeze is described as a very gentle guy, but also a strange car with a mind of his own. That's kind of funny. It infers that Amy isn't really in control of the car she's driving. What a fraud. Side note, who does Breeze remind you of? Award yourself 10 points if you instantly thought of Benny the Cab from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. One of the reasons I love golden era 1990s Sonic games so much is because of odd stuff like this. Where did Breeze come from? Who made him? Why is this one car sentient when none of the others are? It's such an odd but charming little detail. Sonic Drift received a sequel and we got to see a couple of new characters. You've got Knuckles in the bulky Tempest based on AMC General's Hummer H1 and Knack the Weasel in The Marvelous Queen, a vehicle that he uses in a number of different games. And finally, Metal Sonic in The Menacing Blue Devil, which has the look of an evil blue Batmobile type car. In Sonic Drift 2, Amy returns and she's driving Breeze again, or rather, Breeze is driving himself with Amy pretending to drive. The game's Japanese manual gives us one more interesting lore nugget, describing Breeze as a mysterious machine with a heart. I like to think that this is metaphorical, suggesting that Breeze is just a lovely guy, but maybe Breeze is a weird cyborg with a beating human heart powering him under the hood. More evil, maniacal, and twisted than any of Robotnik's creations could ever wish to be. There's some real creepy past of potential there. Breeze was actually somewhat prolific in the mid 1990s. So he's in Sonic Drift and Sonic Drift 2, but he also appeared as Amy's ride in the educational Sega Pico game, Sonic's Game World. So technically by 1994, he appeared in more games than, for example, Super Sonic, Metal Sonic, Knack the Weasel, and a whole bunch of others. But then, well, he just mysteriously disappeared. In 1996, Sonic R released for the Sega Saturn. It was the third Sonic racing game after the Sonic Drift duology, and all characters, except for Amy Rose and Dr. Robotnik, raced on foot, as mentioned earlier. Now, in Sonic R, Amy found herself a brand spanking new car, a bulky looking red convertible, with Breeze sadly not present, his friendship with Amy seemingly canonically over, or his racing days just behind him. 
To be honest though, I can't deny that although it's bulky, the little red Corvette looks kind of cool. It's an icon of the low poly era. So, is this unnamed vehicle an upgrade from Breeze overall? I say no. Amy is easily one of the worst characters in Sonic R. She feels more sluggish than the other characters, despite the fact that she's driving a car. You can use this little nitro boost thingy every 15 or so seconds to try and catch up with all the other racers, but you'll probably end up with carpal tunnel syndrome from having to continually trigger it. Oh, and as Amy, you can't jump either. To mitigate these downsides, the car is at least aquatic though, so that's pretty nifty. While the other racers sink when running over water, Amy can just glide on over. Definitely better than Top Gear's best efforts at making a functional aquatic car. We're going in. Relax. <laughs> After Sonic R though begins, in my opinion, the terminal decline in Amy Rose's vehicular standards. By the time we reach Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing in 2010, we find that Amy is driving the pink Cabriolet. It's a somewhat stylish number, but in an utterly garish pink. I can't help but describe the pink Cabriolet as a knockoff breeze with headlights that look suspiciously like eyes. Breeze's sister, perhaps? Look, I get that Amy is a girly girl, but this is almost approaching Penelope pit stop levels of sugary sweet. Fast forward to Team Sonic Racing and Amy is now racing in a new version of the pink Cabriolet. But look at this travesty. Any semblance of character or charm is sadly gutted from the design. It looks like a pink bar of soap. I mean, come on, who among you would choose to drive this over Breeze? The poor guy was dropped for the most generically designed car in the universe. Now, I am happy to report that the chads over at IDW have confirmed something for us all. Breeze lives, and he's still buddies with Amy. Yes, he's appeared in one issue of the IDW comic, hanging outside Amy's house, though relegated exclusively to the classic universe as many great characters have been. So Breeze hasn't been completely lost to the sands of time, he's just chilling. Exactly how and where Amy managed to acquire a sentient car is probably best left to the imagination, but it's a weird little quirk that I never noticed about classic Amy. In terms of IDW's modern universe, Amy's pink cabriolet is her vehicle of choice. At least it's the original version of this car with the eyelash headlights and all that groovy stuff. I can't help but feel like the downgrade in Amy's car is somewhat symbolic of the regression of her character over the years. Amy didn't have a huge amount going for her in the 1990s, but every time we saw her, Sega at least threw us fans a curveball and gave us something unexpected from her. Amy drove a sentient car and played around with fortune cards. She was the type of girl that probably religiously watched every episode of Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. All I'm trying to say is, next time we see Amy in a racing game, I want to see Breeze back. Or maybe I want to see Amy driving a camper van, or a monster truck, or a Harley, or something, anything, with a little bit more personality than whatever this is. That's all for today though, folks. I just wanted to spread the gospel of Breeze and let you all know that this guy exists and that this guy still exists. He's safe. He's in the IDW universe. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.